One of my biggest concerns about Christianity in America is that it has become an academic exercise rather than a lived experience. It's become something to study, something to analyze, to explore, to keep it at arm's length. Look at it through the microscope, keep it far away, make it small, analyze it, describe its parts, rather than something to be experienced. Have we turned Christianity into an intellectual exercise rather than a life to be lived? Let me give you an example of this. In the typical Bible class, we can study the scriptures or topics for years on end, decades even, the entire life of a church. And never once in that Bible class have any stated expectation of obedience, of application, of the word lived out amongst the people of God. We have been sending the message that the Bible is something to be explored, to be assessed, to be analyzed, exegeted, interpreted. Get the language, the original word studies, pull the thing apart, look at the grammar, look at the historical background. It's curious, it's fascinating, it's interesting. It could be a curiosity or it could be a kingdom. A kingdom is not a curiosity. A kingdom demands your attention. The sovereign Lord of the universe has established his kingdom and he has all the power, all the authority, all the wisdom, all the knowledge, and he is exerting himself and in influencing himself into this world to the power of the Holy Spirit. He cannot be ignored. He will not be stopped. It will not be shut down, but we can be sidelined because instead of talking about being disciples, we're talking about being Christians. We're talking about the things that we believe rather than the life that we live. We're talking about the kind of things that intellectually we give our assent to that we choose, yes, Jesus over Buddha or Christianity over Islam or whatever, and it has become an intellectual exercise that has no basis in lived reality and experience. That's why the early church was not called just a philosophical conversation. The early church was called the way that has Old Testament Hebrew roots, that life was a path, life was a journey. We call it a way of life or a way of living the path that you are living your life on. We all have one. We all have a path. We all have a trajectory. And it's very important that we not make this a philosophical exercise of futility, but that we make it a life experienced with God in relationship, life on life with each other, something that we truly can engage and experience to live the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He didn't just say that he was the way to think or just to just merely have an opinion. He said he is the way, the truth, and the life. To come to the Father, to experience the Father, to journey your way to the Father has to go through Jesus, who is not only the way, a uh, manner of living, but is also truth and life. So I encourage you, yes, study the Bible, exegete, interpret, look at historical backgrounds, look up the words, all that in order to come to know God better, to hear him more clearly, to understand, as Jesus said, his voice to be able to discern it from all the competition in order to live the life that Jesus has in store, the kingdom living. This is what Jesus talked about at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. After all this kingdom conversation, he says that the wise man is the one who hears these words of his and puts them into practice, but it's the foolish man who hears all the exact same things and doesn't do anything with it, doesn't live it out, merely hears it merely has opinions of it, merely analyzes it, articulates it, philosophizes over it, and leaves it on the shelf. G.K. Chesterton has a very famous quote where he said, the Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried, unlived. The feet are not walking the path. This is the way of Christ and the kingdom of God following King Jesus submitting to his authority, living under his rule and reign. You can't just say to the king, I believe you exist. You must say to the king, and I live as a servant to your will. I live aligned with your kingdom principles. This is what we are called to in Christ. 
And it may well be that the church in America has been ineffectual because we have philosophized the gospel rather than experienced the gospel. We have turned it into a mental game on par with other majors at the university rather than make it the most important priority of our life around which every other thing orients itself, our desires orient themselves, our identity orients itself, our relationships orient themselves, our character, our morality, our ethics orient themselves around this way. Jesus is the way. And he has revealed himself through his word. And we need to be in the word, not just to have opinions of the word and to say, well, this commentator has it, says it better than this commentator, or I am of this school of thought, of the new perspective on Paul, uh, or I'm a penal substitutionary atonement kind of person, or I'm an amillennialist or premillennialist or dispensationalist or whatever. So we identify as a Lutheran or X, Y, and Z. No. Are we participating in the way, submitting ourselves to the rule and reign of God in the world? This is what we have been called to do, and it's not a philosophical exercise. And I cannot help but believe that the church in America is just an absolute dismay because we turn the whole thing into an academic exercise. And when the stuff hit the fan with COVID, the wheels fell off because you can philosophize at home. You can philosophize by yourself. You don't need a community to show you how to think about something. And so we could sit online and just watch church online. We could sit here and do Bible studies and watch the Bible Project and gather up all this information. I'm as guilty of that as anybody. I love the information. But it has to turn into practice. It has to turn into walking. It has to turn into a way of living and order of life and being, or else it is left untried, thought of relentlessly, considered, assessed, analyzed, philosophized excessively, but it was found wanting in the living, not in the thinking. How do we get our thinking to move us to action? How do we turn our philosophizing into a way of life that impacts the world in the same kind of way that Jesus and his followers impacted the world? You'll notice that Jesus just never just set up shop and uh, philosophized about things. He went out amongst the people and rescued them, healed them, brought them back into reconciled relationships with each other, whether it's Zacchaeus to the community, whether it's the sinful woman or the bleeding woman, or whoever it may be, he was out living and doing and applying the truths of what he understood and knew as the Logos, the Word himself in the flesh. And now we, he says, 1 Corinthians 12, 27, are the body of Christ. And every one of us has a part in it in order to exert ourselves in a kingdom manner to the betterment of the body and for the betterment of the world, living the ways of Jesus. We need to surround ourselves with people who are committed to being in this, on this path, in this journey, living the word. I don't know how to say it any better than that. But I think it's been our Achilles heel, and it's found our approach to the Christian faith, which we have interpreted to mean a, just a way of thinking, a set of beliefs or opinions, rather than, as Matthew Bates says, an allegiance, which leads to submissive action as citizens of the kingdom of the divine sovereign king of the universe. Big difference. Notice, all you got to do is go to your Bible and look at what happens when God shows up in places. Look at Mount Sinai in Exodus 24. Look at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of God shows up and the power and the rumblings and the fire and the billows of smoke begin consuming things. People are like, whoa, is us. We are humbled. We can't believe what we're seeing. And all of that divine potency and presence has been distilled down to the Spirit who is in us, and we are temples of the living God. This is not a philosophical exercise. First Peter 2 says that we are living stones being built into a spiritual house of the living God. He is in us. How can we just make that 
a philosophical exercise. Are you a cessationist or do you believe miracles happen today? Oh, I believe miracles happen today. Well, how dare you think that? Are you saying, oh, how dare you be a cessationist? It's like, are you living for God? Do you read his word and try to live it out? Do you live a moral and ethical life? Do you confess your sins and repent when you do wrong? Are we trying to reconcile relationships when we hurt people? Like, what does this really look like? Because it matters. It matters how we live this life and treat people and how we view God and the kinds of things we do to connect with God or disconnect with God. It all matters very much. And I believe that if we re-embrace not just a kingdom thinking, but a kingdom living, which has been the name of my blog since the mid-2000s, we can begin to observe the already ongoing work of God in the world. It will just become more obvious to us because, as Jesus said, some people see the same things as other people, but only certain people have an eye to see or an ear to hear what is truly going on. And I believe if you want eyes to see and ears to hear what is truly going on, the only way to get in tune is through the way. It's through the living. It's through the walking. It's through the submission that you be begin to be able to hear and discern what God is doing and what he is saying. When it's purely academic and nothing is on the line one way or the other based on what you think or you don't think is a powerless, ineffectual faith that is neutered of the Spirit and will result in complacent Christianity, complacent congregations that will dwindle on the vine. The salt has lost its saltiness. So let us be in the Word and let us attune to God to live for God, to live into what we find in His Word to be faithful and obedient, not because we think it earns us anything, but because we're unworthy servants just merely doing our duty, as Jesus once said. So I hope this encourages you and blesses you to begin more and more living what you know, not just knowing not to live, knowing things not to live them. That's, the Bible says, worse than never knowing in the first place. Y'all take care. Talk again soon.